All right, we're gonna we're gonna put this ring in with a clean face this way here, but we want it to be sticking out because we're gonna be actually facing probably a couple hundred off of that diameter there. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and we're still gonna run our aluminum shims in there, but I'm gonna set it up with parallels here, and I'm not gonna put the second parallel up here, or whatever, until I get this setting in, and. I want to set it on the aluminum here so it holds it back pretty close to being center. Then I put the secondary parallel and I'm I'm holding pressure against it right now. So now I'm gonna try slip one of these in here and give it a little tension and of course as long as I make sure that this is still in over here, we can add this one. Okay, I can slide the parallels from there to there. They feel pretty close to being the same feel, top to bottom. Give it a little cinch. All right, let's see what we got here. Now we can look back there and we can see some run out, but we're gonna stare down the face here. And the face looks pretty good. So this is running out this way here. So we're gonna put an indicator in here and then we're gonna pour jaw this in, inside here until we get it running true. All right, we put our in indicator inside here, and we're kind of lucky that the actual length of our plunger on the indicator fits right in there. And I'm rolling it over. We got about 60 thousandths there of run out. And, okay, right there's the closest here, so I'm going to start by giving it a push in that direction. Yep, got sidetracked. We just had a pretty good ambulance run going by the house here and it sounded pretty bad. It was all the way from Harwich, which is the next town over. But you could hear that siren all the way from down the road. Okay, we're bringing this around so we can actually see more in line with the indicator. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We're just going to be working the face, so um, I, I kind of like that. Let's see what we're at here now. Okay, it's fluctuating about two thousandths there. I'm going to turn it on so we can actually see what it looks like back in the back there. And it looks like it's running perfectly true. be happy with that all right after our first cut you can measure the width right there and you can actually see how far you are out and if you wanted to you can measure that and write the plus or minus on the amount of thickness around there then you can put your indicator right on there and dial the imperfection into your new clean face and then you'll be able to parallelism uh, it, it without having to reach on the back side or you can get an indicator that has a finger that can reach in and grab the back side of your part and then you can tap that true. All right, we're starting to clean the face. This establishes a starting point as far as our depth there and our first measurement of uh, width there. And you can see this was the stock cut that came with the part there. So, um, 
All right, uh, two and an eighth right on the money, and we're going to be going to one and three quarter. We're down to uh, last cut or two, and we went around and we checked our our width here just so we could go over what we were talking about. There's uh, eight sixteen at that jaw. Here we got uh, just in front of the jaw. As soon as I can, I can get it. Okay, and we got uh, eight twenty three, and we got eight twenty and a half, and we got eight. 817 there so we know that I don't know it's probably like five or six but let's go ahead and I just happen to have this intrepid uh, indicator here and this will let us reach in there and I can get right on the other side of of the bore here Let me see, can I do this down at the bottom? I should be able to do it down at the bottom, right? And then that way you can probably read the indicator as well. Alright, now I'm just bumping it back. Let me see. Let me move you. Let me move you in. Okay. And now. And we'll back up the indicator there. All right, so that's a that's a good position right there. Yeah, look at that. We uh, okay, we got about eight thousands right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap that till we get that straight. All right, so we got a brass hammer here, and we're going to go ahead and okay, that's plus. That would be minus. Okay, we're plus on this one here, and we're minus on this one here. So I'm going to tap on the minus one here myself. 
see if we can get it to even out a little bit. Oh, we took took three of it away. Okay, we're within a couple thousands. I'm not going to fudge it any closer than that, but I'm just going to show you that we've taken it, we had like eight, and now we're down to like two thousands there. Okay, so let's go ahead and back up a little bit. I'm going to throw my other indicator up here where it's easier for you to read it. And Turn it around here real quick. All right, and there's uh, well, we were within two, so we were still running out. We had eight, so uh, there is every bit of our run out, except for just a couple that we left in there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and finish off our last, uh, oh, I think we're like 40 thousandths off of here. And then we'll be done. We'll go ahead and chamfer this inside and outside like we did the other side. And roughly we have 70 thousandths to come off of here. Okay, there's 780. We're just going around here again. 779. 781. 781 and a half. All right, so there's we're within the 2000s there. All right, so we got uh, we got 30,000s come off here just to be exactly one and three quarters, plus or minus 2000s. <laughs> ring minus the cross pin hole all right I think we're about ready to get going here I've I've got this gantry set up so I can hold this shaft up here I've got a shim support here and I've got my vise clamped in as, as to hold it from moving anywhere and this is being held down and held up uh, in that position there now we got to put a cross pin hole through our shaft. Now I'm going to bring the camera around to the other side here and I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay this out so that I can get a hole that's going to be fairly true to center going all the way through here so we can put a bolt in here. And I'm going to kind of look, uh, see what I have and I'm undecided probably a three quarter inch bolt is going to be uh, what I'm going to be happy with but I may go ahead and do it with a five eighths. Like I said, this, this uh, collar here and that plate is just basically to keep the pin from vibrating out. 
we get some measurements, we'll get this set in here, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to find center and put a hole in here. All right, we're not we're not aligned yet. I don't have no, we're not aligned yet, and I don't have the table locked down. And we need to go ahead and figure out center line is the first thing. After we figure out center line, we'll slide our ring on here, and we're going to get a measurement between that face and the back side of our ring. There, uh, we have a set dimension. Plus, we're going to actually give it a quarter inch of, of clear clearance or play in it. What I want to do is, I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, Sharpie and create a path here of the area that I'm going to most likely need to create a mark here. All right. Now, my, uh, my drill press here, fairly level. I'm going to run my center finder like this, and I'm going to look at the bubble. And actually, we can, we're going to be working in this direction right here. It's pretty close. It's about a sixteenth of an inch inside the bubble. I like that. I like that. Now, because we're all familiar with uh, having a little bit off centered um, edges right here, although these look like they've been machined, but I know they're not quite right. They'll give you a little different line every time. So I'm going ahead and I'm Turning my unit around. I could put my sterrets on there and I feel pretty confident with those, but first time I didn't get a good mark here. Alright, so I have about a sixteenth of an inch between those two lines, and I'm just gonna split them for my other line. Now, how do you get a layout like this? I, you know, you could take a square and you could lay it along here. And <clears throat> if this was faced, you would be able to get somewhat of a line. I like to use my key seat rule clamps is uh, what they are. Stare at number 298. Still got the original box. I got these back in early 80s. Like a lot of my cool tools there. I had a couple old timers that uh, helped me when it come time I was shopping for stuff but <clears throat> also turning me on to things and the key seat rule is actually two clamps like almost it turns it into almost like a V block only we're working 90s right here and then you're able to go ahead and hold your scale parallel apart. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give a straight in eyeball here like that and then <clears throat> then I can lay this right in here and I can give a scribe on. You know I think I need to sharpen my scribe here it's not scratching like I like it to. All right, we're gonna call that that center line, and uh, we're we're clamped, locked down on the table. So our drill is gonna pass through the center of our part, or at least as close as we can lay out center, which I feel confident with what I have and how I'm gonna come down and line up to um, a punch mark when I put it there. We're going to slide on our ring now, after I get some of this stuff out of the way and I put my clamp uh, seats away. <clears throat> what 
one time I had the box and I could find the box but I couldn't find the clamps and so um, you know making it a habit to put them back in there uh, uh, it's easier to recognize that little red box then if you left them clamped to your scale and your scale went got thrown into another container or something you know it's, it makes it easy to lose them all right let's go ahead we're, instead of I got a sling here and I got a couple clamps so I'm gonna come down the side here and we got uh, 41 41 and a half to the end there so I'm just gonna hold 41 41 and a half eyeballing it down to the end of the shaft here and we wanted 39 and a half plus a quarter so we wanted 39 and three quarters which leaves inch and three quarter which is this ring setting on there kind of flush with the end we're going to go ahead and we're going to fudge it a little bit just so it's just a little bit past the edge right there about a sixteenth of an inch all right now get my pocket scale here and we want to split that in half nothing real hard here and one eight uh, one eight fifty so we'll go like nine fifty and we can <clears throat> we can go ahead and take our scribe uh huh. I had to laugh because I was just I was uh, texting uh, back and forth with uh, John Double Boost there, and <laughs> I was I was standing by the sharpener and and I uh, left it laying right there, just spaced it out. <sighs> okay, eight fifty uh, is. 950, right? 950 and it's actually 925, but <clears throat> there we go. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put a little punch there and I kind of like it to go over this way just a little bit and put it so light it's okay alright now we're in the center of it alright <clears throat> I like that I'm going to raise this up so I can get a good hit on it there we go okay now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move all of our stuff off of here and we're going to get located on that hole to drill that down through we're going to drill that hole all the way through the shaft then with the shaft sitting here I'm going to slip the ring over here and we're going to go ahead and drill that hole all right <clears throat> we picked up our wrench that we dropped and Bringing our pointer down, we gotta uh, we gotta push this back. Or we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna tighten this up. This this drill press is old, just like a lot of them here. And over the years, you know, this it's the same same clamping and tension here and and uh, they tend to um, age and sag have a little bit of play in them so you gotta you gotta work at it just a little bit but I mean it's nothing extreme okay just a little bit of twist right there I still got to go over that way. Now I can't loosen this and slide it around like I normally do, so I have to, I have to physically loosen it up, make a little bit of a movement, and then tighten it up, and then, and then check the alignment again. Because as you tighten this up, it pulls it back up to square.
Oh, I like that. Okay. Now I'll get this one right. Now I'll tighten this one over here and we'll see how it changes. <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay, I think, uh, I think I'm going to be doing good there. And also, too, we're, our spindle is going to be up in the air, and we're going to be sticking out here a little bit. Um, so I, I'm happy with how close I am to that punch mark there. Let's go ahead, and we're going to get ourselves a long drill in here to make that first pass. i got to go hunt one up. All right, I think we're ready to go here. Um, this is a short drill just so I can get down in here uh, with some auto feed and we'll get some depth in here after that I'm gonna sneak in here with this little one here and I'll do some in and outs uh, uh, and get this down and you know if I have any problem with it um, I'm gonna um, bring it out and I'll uh, I'll put in something a little bit bigger I just didn't want to get any larger because I'm gonna this is gonna be the finish hole here which gives me a 64th over 5 8 and I think we're going to go in with that I think that's going to be a comfortable hole and a 5 8 bolt going through this is going to be pretty nice I think uh, if it needs to go bigger or larger um, uh, we'll take a look at that after we have the hole made up but I think I think uh, 5 8 the whole little collar bolt here is going to be fine Okay, we're going to change out this little bit longer drill because I'm up against the, the fluid already. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty sharp. I haven't, I haven't used it in a while, but I do know that. All right, there. All right, th this should pierce through, and we'll give it a shot. Okay, now I'm going to slow it down just a little bit for this drill bit, even though that might be fast enough. The drive all gearbox, we just switched one gear over there. And it makes that much difference right there. Alright.
Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this bit out. I'm going to slip the ring over. And uh, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill the hole on one end of the side of the ring there. And then we're going to be putting this through with the ring around there and drilling the other hole to follow. So <coughs> we got a true hole going through the part. And that's why I pull the stuff off of it. Now it's a tight fit, and there's a there's probably a burr right down here that's. Keeping it, I'd rather, I'd rather have it tight. There we go. All right, right there. All right, bring our speed back up. down to the bottom and we're going to drill through that one.
all right we're gonna pull that off of there and then we're gonna get our chamfer tool and we'll go ahead and deburr the holes and then we'll probably go ahead and put a punch mark in here um, we'll put a punch mark here anyway but we'll go ahead and we're gonna rotate it around 180 we're gonna see how actually how close it is but we want to go ahead this is how we matched it to this pin and um, we want to make sure that we do have the marks on there and we'll point that out to the guys down there at Robert R. Alright, and we're going to stamp it. We're just going to put turn right right here and turn right right here. There we go. Okay, once we get rid of all those burrs and everything else, she'll, she'll go back on there just like she did before we drilled the hole.